Hey guys, so this is what I'm taking this year on a 20 day wilderness hunt in the western Colorado. Uh, it's kind of broken up by what I wear, what I'm going to have in my day pack, what I would have in a bivy sack or a bivy kind of kit, and then what I'll have at base camp. So we typically go in, we stay in until we have uh, at least one elk down. Uh, we'll pack that elk out and then we go back up and finish the hunt, try to get a second elk. Uh, so we do plan to go in there for extended duration, 16 to 20 days, this year being a full 20. What I wear is uh, typically starting off with the boots. Uh, I've been wearing the Scarpa Kinesis. I like them pretty significantly. They are heavier. They're kind of your typical big leather brown boot. Really good waterproof uh, qualities. And they're also really, really durable. Uh, I'm going to kind of mix it up this year and try out some Ultra Lone Peak. And these are much lighter. They're much more like a tennis shoe type boot. Uh, these aren't particularly comfortable, and these are extremely comfortable, but I don't think they're gonna be very durable. So I'm gonna be testing the two out kind of side by side. Uh, I always wear a chest pack. This is a Badlands pack. It's a, kind of a limited version. I think Cabela's made it and sold it exclusively. But in here, I'll keep my range finder, some calls. Uh, usually keep my cell phone in there. That's gonna be a backup GPS device as well as a camera. And this is always on my chest. Always take a Sunto Ambit. Uh, this is the Ambit 3 Peak model. Uh, GPS uh, functionality on it. Really good for dropping waypoints, whether we drop packs or find something we want to come back later and find. It's extremely accurate. It also syncs up online to an app. That way I can always get on there and see where that elk was, where the kill was, whatever it may be. Very handy. I always take it with me. It's a backup GPS device. As far as what I wear, uh, a little stretchy simple belt made by... Uh, Arcade, it looks like. It's nice, rides underneath the waist pack really well. Basically, I usually always wear some type of like long sleeve wool shirt. This one right here is made by First Light. I have other ones by other companies over there. I wear this in conjunction with a QU attack pant. Uh, I pretty much exclusively wear those pants. I love them, I've had a lot of success with them. Me and my hunting partner both use those and those only. We take three pair with us. As far as headgear goes, usually just rock a boonie cap. This is a Kuyu, Tiburon style boonie. Works really functional. In my pockets and whatnot, I have uh, various items. Small compass, Hoochie Mama, external read call, some wind dust, and a handkerchief. That's pretty much always on my person at all times. All right, slung around my body, I have a... Uh, Basic bugle too. This one has the Conqueror mouthpiece. I kind of suck using the uh, diaphragm type call. This one I'm able to do really good locators and a few other calls as well. Uh, I wouldn't consider myself a very strong caller, but it seems to get the job done. I always take one trekking pole as well, not only for my bivy shelter, but in case we are packing out meat, we find them very, very worth the wait. Uh, this is just a basic black diamond trekking pole, nothing fancy. I haven't really seen the need to go ultra light with carbon fiber poles or anything like that. The pack I'm running is uh, the XO5500. Right now it's kind of set up for uh, what I would call a day hike. No lid, very compressed. Um, I do use the cargo hauler on the inside as well as the bow bucket on the front side. Uh, typically we're hiking back in the dark at nighttime after carrying your bow for 16 hours. Uh, I like to strap it on the back. Uh, I went with the 5500 because I kind of want one pack to do everything. And you can see right now, very narrow profile. I mean, this is definitely set up where you can hunt in it. And I haven't found the need or the desire to uh, get an additional pack or a smaller pack. This kind of is a one size fits all, whether I'm doing a day hunt or a 20 day hunt, like in this case. Uh, I usually keep a Badlands magnetic pouch right here and another pouch on the outside. I'll keep my binos in this. And this is the rig I wear basically if I'm doing a, a day hunt. If I go bivy hunt, I will throw the lid on and I'll have additional equipment in there as well. All right, what I roll with as far as a, a day hunt, whether that's a, a one day hunt or a three day hunt, uh, kill kit. I have a heavy kill kit, it's like three pounds. Uh, five bags, these are the black Ovis bags. I have an additional bag in here. It seems that every time we butcher an elk, there's not quite enough room. You end up having a lot of hot meat on hot meat, especially when you pull brisket, neck meat, uh, the loins off. It all just kind of stacks up and has difficulty cooling from our experience. So we bring an extra game bag so that way we can get more wind coverage around the, the meat and let it get cool and dry faster. Uh, as far as the knife goes, I use a fixed blade knife. I tried the Havilons, wasn't a real big fan. I think last year I broke like three or four blades. 
Uh, I'm going back to my kind of traditional go-to knife, which is a Hell Jaeger, uh, made in Norway. Buddy gave this to me a few years ago for one of my earlier elk hunts. Very, very good knife. I love it. Um, I'll take it forever from now on. Uh, we also have basically contractor bags, some latex gloves, just easy to keep your hands clean, that additional game bag, a small sharpener, flagging tape, and then quite a bit of parachute cord, enough to hang six uh, bags of meat. All right, I always bring a pack cover. This is an Osprey, fits nicely on this pack. I already had it, so I didn't go through and buy another one. Rain jacket. This is the uh, Yukon from Kuyu. It's a little on the heavy side, but it's pretty much indestructible. You can use it for anything. I've used it snowboarding before. Uh, I do not like getting wet in the backcountry from the waist up if I can avoid it. Don't mind so much from the waist down, but I always carry a good rain jacket. This is a Melanzana. These guys are out of Leadville. It's a basic fleece hoodie. Uh, I wore this last year on a mule deer hunt. Loved it. And I'm going to take it this year for my archery elk hunt. It's kind of my insulating layer. Toilet paper. Self-explanatory. Rocking a, a black diamond spot. Uh, I think Mark has the same headlamp. I have not figured out how to use it. I lost my previous headlamp, which was a Petzl. Bought this on a trip up to uh, Montana pretty recently. Still kind of figuring it out. So far, I like it. It's got way more modes than I think I need. But I think this year, I'll be able to become a little more proficient with it. Backup headlamp. Always carry one of these. This kind of goes in my kit, which is kind of like the just-in-case kit. Uh, this is a Petzl Bendy. It's super minimal. It recharges uh, with a USB. Uh, has multi-functions. You can say you can wear it around your neck. It has lots of uh, lots of pretty neat little functionalities to it. First year using this, pretty excited about it. It's going to be my backup headlamp. It's also going to be the one that I'll take with me anytime we drop packs and we decide to move on an animal. That's one thing we do do is if we get on a bull and we decide to set up, typically we will drop packs, mark with a GPS, hang a piece of flagging tape above it, and then we'll move in just with minimal stuff. So when that happens, I do usually take the Slurpee Stalker. I'll slide this just-in-case kit inside there. So in case we're out past dark or we end up staying overnight, we have what we need. In this kit also, basic safety whistle, duct tape, repair kit, backup batteries, uh, e-blanket, and uh, a little repair kit for my sleeping pad in case it pops. So like I said, when I drop packs, we take this along with a headlamp, goes in the Slurpee Stalker, and off we go. Right here, uh, Kuyu Net Gator, Kuyu Wool Beanie, as well as a pair of uh, fingerless wool gloves. It's not super cold in September whenever we do our archery hunts. This seems to be enough to keep me warm. Basic first aid kit, band-aids, whatnot, uh, moleskin, some rock tape, as well as all the basic meds, ibuprofen, uh, the little pink tabs, tums, all that good stuff. I went a couple years without doing binos, and I really resented it. So I do carry a basic small set of 10 power binos. Uh, these seem to help out not only for identifying whether or not there is an animal you see up ahead in the timber, but also uh, I had an, a, a bad experience where I was watching a wounded bull move, and it was very difficult to see without my binos. So I do carry these now all the time. They are on my waist belt. Uh, very handy. Definitely worth the weight in my opinion. Always take a journal, uh, basic right in the rain, a uh, little book right here. Seems to help. We kind of keep track of our hunts, number of bugles we hear per day, animals we've seen, both bulls, cows, uh, other animals we've seen, as well as how many encounters and then how many opportunities present themselves throughout the hunt. This is a fun thing we do year over year, me and my hunting partner do. So always bring a notebook. Also, it's good to leave notes for people if you're rendezvousing with them at a certain point. Uh, total comfort, luxury item, a book. I like to... Uh, go out from camp and hunt the entire day. And so when it is time to kind of sit, relax, and rest, I do enjoy reading. As far as communication device, uh, Garmin InReach Explorer. It's pretty bummed out they came out with a new one. It was a lot smaller, like right after I bought this. But this seems to work really well. It syncs up to my phone, so I can use my phone to actually communicate with this device instead of having to use the keypad. Uh, very handy if you're calling in a packer or trying to meet up with someone who's coming in at a later date. As far as water filtration goes, I use the Sawyer Squeeze. I have two of the large 64 ounce empty the bladders, a dirty bag, so to say. That allows me to not only have three liters of water in my bladder, but then I have another two 64 ounce bags of dirty water. So I have plenty of water on the move. This year we're hunting an area that is fairly, uh, has plenty of water in it, so it's not gonna be an issue. I also have the quick connect to go right into the bladder. So 
far as bladder goes, we go uh, with the Osprey Hydraulics, the three liter. I usually only carry two liters at a time on me. Uh, it seems to be enough if I have a liter in the morning, two liters throughout the day, and then I'll have a liter that evening. Good amount of water throughout the day. If I need more, like I said, I'll just filter it real fast and we cross the stream, not a big deal. Like I said earlier, I do use the Slurpee Stalker. I love it. Um, when we drop packs, I can take this as well as the kind of just-in-case kit, and I can go out for the rest of the day and be fine. Even if I have to sleep out overnight, you know, I have that emergency blanket. I got a buddy I can cuddle with. Uh, we'll, we'll be all right for the evening. Because I do run a bladder, I do have a lot of powdered drink mixes in my uh, food bag. I am bringing a shaker bottle this year. I'm also going to be using it for protein shakes in the morning. I seem to struggle with getting enough protein on these hunts, especially during breakfast. So immediately for breakfast will be oatmeal, protein shake, peanut butter, and we'll go from there. I always carry the food bag as well. Inside a food bag is basically going to be my lunch, my snacks, my breakfast, and I have a dehydrated meal for dinner. Uh, if we're going out in a bivy, obviously I'll carry multiple days of food at one time, but if we're just going out for the day and then coming back to base camp, this is what I'll take with me. I got a coffee in here. I got oatmeal, two packs. I'll do it with a nut butter kind of packet, squeeze that inside there. For uh, snacks, I have multiple types of bars, Thunderbird, Big Bars. Uh, I always bring dried fruit and dried nuts. For lunch, I'll do some type of cracker, and then I'll do jerky as well. Uh, a couple pieces of candy. I don't ever eat candy here at home, but when I'm on the hunt and I'm out moving around, it's uh, remarkably delicious. I love it. I do eat a lot of it. Uh, basic food bag here. Like I said, I do a dehydrated meal for dinner. Seems to work fine for me. It's very easy, very convenient. There's pretty decent flavors out there. I do pretty much mostly Mountain House. I know there's some new ones. I haven't quite tried them. I probably will at some point, but you know, usually if you're going to get something new, you want to try it before you leave, and then you're eating a $12 meal. Uh, dehydrated meal at home just to test it out. So I just kind of go with what I know. It works really well. I am bringing in 20 days of food this time, and they're all basically going to be in seal line bags. So I'll have four meals uh, per bag, and I'm packing in five bags. My food weight for 20 days is going to be 40 pounds just under, including the weight of the bags. So you can probably see those down in front right there. We'll also have to hang these because we are hunting in bear country. So cordage, carabiners, all that will go up in the trees. That's pretty much it with the exception of compass and a topographic map. Compass, a lot of guys don't bring a pretty high-tech compass like this. This is a uh, Sunto MCT Global. Uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy the art of land navigation. Although I rarely am forced to use it, I do choose to use it as often as I can. Uh, I used to always walk with the GPS in my hand. I could always immediately reference the topo, where you're at, find a general direction, and move from there. I'm trying to shy away from the uh, electronic devices. So even though InReach has GPS capabilities, I won't actually use this device unless I absolutely need to or if I am uh, communicating with someone who's actually not in the field. That's pretty much it for what goes in my pack. If we're doing a multi-day hunt, and so a lot of times we will work out of a base camp, will uh, go out for three or four days and will spike out. I do bring this baby kit. So I run the dry bag that XO makes, like so. That way if we do find a good spot that we can spike out at, I'll go ahead and drop the unnecessary kit that I won't need to carry throughout the entire day. Uh, sleeping bag, plasma, marmot, 15 degree down bag. Pretty nice bag, had it for a couple of years, hasn't filled me yet, I enjoy it. As far as the shelter goes, this is uh, made by Kamek. They're actually a hammock company. This is their Cooley Rainfly. It's a good size, ultra light, waterproof tarp, for lack of a better word, that uh, has a bunch of connections already on it, so that way I can immediately tie it between two trees. I don't need to use a trekking pole, but I can use a trekking pole, and I will if I only have one with me, uh, in conjunction with a tree. We found this to be extremely effective for a two-person spike camp. Uh, I've been in rain with it. Sometimes we carry it all day, and if it rains, we won't even put rain jackets on. We'll just pop this up real fast and shelter under it, wait till the rain passes, get back up, pack it up, and then continue to hunt. I use this in conjunction with uh, basically a mat they make as well. They're both very light together. Uh, this whole combo is under five pounds as far as pad, shelter, sleeping bag, and this kind of ground cloth, I would say. For a sleeping pad, um, rocking the Tensor uh, made by Nemo. Ultralight, super small, 
Uh, super minimal, doesn't take a lot of space up. I used this on uh, a recreational trip pretty recently for 14 days of camping. Loved it, had no problems with it. Very comfortable, slept great. Tent stakes to go with this right here. And then I used Jet Boil Mini Mo. Uh, I bought this one basically because it was shorter and rounder, easier to clean, not have to dig down the bottom. Basic plastic spoon. And then if we're bivvying, I'll bring a small fuel canister just like so. I also bring a Billabillo, I think it's called, made by Nemo. Basically, this is a kind of three-purpose three piece of equipment. It's a pillow, it's a dry bag, and also it inflates your sleeping pad. Uh, these are super thin, require a lot of air. I'm usually kind of lightheaded by the time I get done blowing it up. This kind of kills all three. I'll just take my fleece, toss that inside, roll it up, and that's my pillow for the night. Uh, last basically phase of equipment from here over is going to be my base camp. So we go in, we set up a base camp, uh, we're going to have 20 days of food there, we'll have backup clothing, we'll have backup supplies, spare releases, all that good stuff there. Uh, here I do have a few comfort items that depending on whether we're hiking in or we're getting horses in may or may not come with me. Uh, puffy jacket, all right, made by Mountain Hardware, old school, super comfy, kind of worth the weight carrying up, especially for cold evenings. And we're kind of hanging out. We don't build fires at nighttime. We usually stay kind of, I guess, uh, under the radar. So having a jacket is pretty nice if we're sitting around talking about the day's hunt. I will be bringing a second Nemo sleeping pad. This one is a vector field insulated. It's much wider. It's much longer. It has insulating properties. And it also has a built-in uh, inflator as well. I'm going to try this out for me because we're going up for 20 days and we're not hiking that far this year. I don't mind carrying the extra weight. Basic trowel, toilet paper for 20 days, hopefully that's enough. And then for base camp, we also use a different water system. So the Sawyer Squeeze is great for on the move, uh, getting water as we go. But we're at base camp, we don't want to spend a lot of time filtering water. So I bring a uh, Katadyne 10 liter base camp filter and I use it with an MSR dromedary. So basically what we'll do is we'll have a dirty drum, a clean drum, my partner brings one as well. We'll go fill the dirty water up and we'll basically toss it inside the Katadyne and we'll have a clean bladder down below. We basically are just cycling through that the entire time. So we're pretty much always gonna have 10 to 20 liters of clean water. So when we wake up first thing, we can immediately top off our reservoirs, top off our bottles, make breakfast, and then head out and not have to mess with filtering water first thing in the morning. It's uh, once again, not necessary, but well worth the wait. I'm totally willing to lug this to save one trip in to save every single night of having to squeeze water through my mini filter. All right, it's very fast, has a high flow rate. I enjoy this filter a lot. Basic shave kit, toothbrush, toilet paper, small hand towel, some soap, chapstick, all that kind of basic hygiene stuff for camp. As far as clothes go, we bring in three sets of clothes. Uh, I mentioned earlier, long sleeve wool shirts, two more pairs of attack pants, I will pack in a pair of uh, cryptic rain pants, big heavy ones. We don't wear these too often, but if we get caught in some inclement weather and it's just raining and raining and raining, we don't want to sit in camp. Uh, I know the success uh, odds of shooting a bull in the rain, it's kind of low. Haven't had a lot of success with it before, but we'd rather move around in rain gear and just try to hunt as opposed to just sit in camp on a rainy day all day. Bring in some sleep clothes, clothes a little hat, some thermal long bottoms, a t-shirt, and then a pair of Crocs just for walking around camp. I'll bring in extra socks as well. I bring quite a few socks and I change these out every day. Five to six pair typically. Some backup fuel, larger canister for base camp use. Like I said, most of the time we are going to be going back to base camp. So we'll bring a larger fuel canister in. And if we're moving for a spike camp, we'll be rocking this right here. For coffee in the mornings or a little bit of whiskey at nighttime, a little thermos, a little, thir uh, I should say, a uh, little insulated mug. And then basically I bring a bag of backup equipment. So I got a backup release, a backup spoon, a backup bugle tube, backup external recall, backup hoochie mama, batteries, anything that I might need that I might break or lose, I'll bring that. That's absolutely critical to the hunt. Uh, lots of cordage. We'll have to do laundry at some point, typically. Uh, we won't wear our clothes for 20 days you know, in a row. 
usually day 10 or about halfway through the hunt, we'll stop, do some laundry, kind of do like a little bath in the creek. Um, got power right here. I use the Poseidon Dark Energy. This is for charging the Sunto Ambit, charging the Garmin if I need to, as well as that headlamp. Necessary cords, and then lots of parachute cord for hanging wet clothes after doing laundry, as well as hanging the bear bags. Bring a Leatherman tool, it's got the saw on it. It has multiple uh, bits and pieces for working on a bow if we need to. And that is about it as far as equipment goes. So I know off the top of my head right now, we have five bags total uh, for 20 days of food. That's gonna weigh in at 40 pounds, depending on the uh, situation when we arrive. We may have a buddy as horses, we may not. I do have an Osprey backpack. My initial plan right now is to basically have two packs loaded up and then shuttle him in. We're only going, I think, about three miles in this time, and we'll stay in for the whole 20 days. So shuttling packs back and forth one day is not gonna be that big a deal. Uh, if my buddy does have horses, we'll just toss in the horses and then we'll go and it'll be an easy day. So let's go ahead and pack this stuff up and then we'll get some weights. All right, so pack with water and food exactly as I would actually hunt with it this season. And the XO 5500. Right around 24 pounds with water and food. Three day bivy with three days of food, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, shelter, everything else I need to go on a three day spike hunt. 24 pounds in the pack plus another 12 pounds. It's going to be about 36 pounds for a three day hunt. Everything I need in the pack. Yeah, I'll go ahead and take the rest of the base camp kit. I'll toss that inside the uh, Osprey pack and then we'll get a total weight with food, day pack, bivy kit, as well as my base camp food. Oh, I have an Osprey Aether. 85 liter pack loaded up as well. This is also going to contain uh, my base camp shelter, which is just a Marmot Limelight three person tent. That's about six pounds. And we'll go ahead and weigh this pack right here. About 25 pounds. So 25 pounds for base camp plus five for the tent. 30 plus 40 for the food, 70 pounds. And then I think it was, what did I say, 32 with that. So for a 20 day hunt, I'm rolling just over 100 pounds a kit. Uh, I probably could cut this down by probably 10 to 15 pounds, but for this specific year and where we're hunting, how far we're moving, uh, I'm not too worried about it. It's basically gonna be me shuttling two 50 pound packs, uh, one long day going up and downhill, not that big of a deal. Like I said, it's not an ultra light hunt, but that's the way we do it.